Hi, and welcome to episode nine of the Dittmer Knittery podcast. My name is Bev, and you can find me and Dittmer Knittery on the internet, right here on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, and I'll talk more about those connections a little bit later in the podcast. I have a list here. I haven't done podcasts because I have so many things to talk about. I couldn't decide what to talk about. I made pages and pages of notes in my notebook, my podcast notebook. And I went off on so many tangents and couldn't decide what to talk about and ended up not doing a podcast for over a month now so many tangents and I'll try to get to them all eventually, but not today. And in a minute, I'll talk about some advice I got. And that was some of the advice I got is, yeah, it's okay to talk about the tangents. The tangents can be important too, but you can't talk about them all in one day. I'm not going to try to talk about them all today or even in one day. And you know, at this point, um, I'm not trying to get monetized maybe one day, but that's not the point of this. The point of this is to make and keep connections. And I can't do that if I'm not making a podcast. I can't do that as well. If I'm not making a podcast, I connect with a lot of you by going to your channels and going to your lives that I especially love. And I enjoyed the Vlogmas podcast so very much. Looked forward to that and enjoyed all of it. It really helped to have all of you doing those podcasts and keeping us connected. And one of the reasons that I didn't do a podcast for a while was intentional is, you know, I knew over the holidays that there would be plenty of content. And my intention was to put out a podcast the first week of January. We are here in the second week of January. And like I said, I just um, got really distracted by all the things I wanted to talk about. So I'm here and we are going to talk about, I am going to talk about the uh, works in progress and the finished objects that I have. Uh, I said that I would also mention, I have a list here. So I um, didn't look at my notes this morning. I made a list on my computer and I'm going to refer to that. And when I get to the end of the list, we'll be done with this podcast today. So I said that I asked somebody for advice. I emailed yesterday, I emailed Lisa at Ladybird Loves. And she was kind enough to read my email right away and respond with some really kind words and some really wise advice. Um, and like I said, one of the things she said is it's okay to have a lot to talk about and want to talk about everything, but um, pick something, make a list, make a podcast. And so that's what I'm doing. And Lisa, thank you so much. Um, she replied to my email with a voice message, and I'm not quite sure how you do that by email, but I'll tell you, hearing her voice yesterday morning was the biggest comfort that I could have gotten. And so I'm here today doing a podcast. Now, um, we'll see how it goes. So far, so good, I think. So I do have um, some works in progress and a few finished objects that I'm going to show you. Not much. I'm going to get a sip of my water. Excuse me. And I have one finished object that I'm not going to show today. I have quite a few pictures of it in progress and as a finished object that I will show when the recipient has it. But for right now, I'm going to keep that under wraps. It is ready to go to the recipient and I'm pretty pleased with it. I hope she will be too. And like I said, I'll be talking about that on another podcast. What I have today for um, a work in progress is last night I did some mosaic crochet. Now I have watched some of Tina's videos in the past and I will put a link to Tina's channel 
the um, videos that I watched, many of you are familiar when I say Tina, T-I-N-N-A. If you search her on YouTube, Tina Mosaic Crochet, she will definitely come up and I will put a link in my description today um, and because I've been wanting to learn Mosaic Crochet. And I think I've tried it once before, maybe even with her videos, but I watched some of the videos yesterday and then last night I got some yarn and I actually made a little bit of mosaic crochet that I'll show you. I have a G hook that I used and I used some sugar and cream cotton that I had, whoops. <laughs> Lisa said, if you drop something, don't worry about editing it out. Just pick it up and go on. Look at her knowing exactly what was going to happen. So I used this, these two colors of sugar and cream with my G hook and I made this little piece of mosaic crochet. Now it has quite a few mistakes in it. There's one right there. See how this is all green and then there's this white where I made a double crochet where I shouldn't have. And also, a lot of times with crochet and knitting, your first row turns out to be so tight, too tight. So I often make that first row or first round loose. And in this case, I made it too loose. You can see that this bottom flares out and I needed to make those beginning stitches a little bit tighter because as I went along, I realized the tighter my stitches are, the better the mosaic crochet looks. And I did, I think I did eight or nine rounds. I did the whole um, sample that she gave. I think I made it through a beginning mosaic crochet part four. And this is the pattern that she shows in part four. And I got started on it and I realized that my um, tablet will fit in it. I could make this into a tablet case. And I may do that, but this is just a sample. I won't be, I won't continue with this piece, mostly because of that it's so loose in the beginning. I can um, easily fix this mistake that I've pinpointed right here. That was just a row or two back. Um, and also, I think if I use a different yarn, I might get a little more drape. This would be fine for a, um, a bag, which of course, you know, I'm a bag maker. If you give me some yarn, I'm probably gonna try to make a bag. So that's my work in progress. And then I have three finished objects I'd like to show you. And all three of these finished objects were made from the same Yarn Bee yarn. This Yarn Bee yarn color wheel that a few months back I found some on sale and I really liked it. I like the weight, the texture, it's 100% cotton. I love the colors. Um, and these two colors, this is Nutmeg Nibbles. This is a uh, three weight yarn. There's 335 yards in this. And then I also used nutmeg in one of these bags that I'm going to show you. But mostly I used the nutmeg nibbles. And um, what happened, what had happened was I made a bag from the nutmeg nibbles and I sold it to a friend for her to give as a Christmas gift. And she liked the color so much that she asked me to make her. So the bag I made that she purchased was a small market bag. And you can make a small medium market bag with one cake of this. Yarn B, Sugar Wheel Cotton, 335 yards will make a nice small to medium market bag. But she asked me to make her a larger one from the Nutmeg Nibbles. So I did, and I do have it here because she um, accidentally left it here, and so I get to show it. <laughs> it's 
kind of large, so you might not see my face for a minute, but I hope you can see the bag. This is a, a fairly large cotton market bag with a nice long strap that works for crossbody. And you can see why I say I like the colors and how they change and how they work up into a bag. This is um, interlocking crochet, which I learned a few months back and can't seem to get over it. I keep using it in these bags. I think it looks really nice, the texture of the, what did I call that stitch? The texture of the interlocking crochet and the single crochet looks really nice on these larger market bags. Now in the process of making this bag for my friend, I ended up buying several skeins of the nutmeg nibbles. Some of it was on sale, like I went to Hobby Lobby and you know how they'll have 30% off quite often. And then when it wasn't 30% off, I used my coupon. So um, I ended up buying more than I needed to make the one bag for her. Excuse me. And I have to tell you, pardon me for drinking so often, but this is a tangent. I try not to make it too lengthy. One of the reasons that I have had a hard time putting a podcast out is I do get dry mouth and get talking so fast that I don't slow down and take a drink and then I don't like the quality of the video because my mouth is dry and that's obvious and I smack my lips and I don't like that. So I'm drinking more often today to try to avoid that whole tangent. And let me know if you can hear lip smacking or anything else that seems inappropriate in my videos. If there's anything, and I, I, I hesitate there because I'm not gonna say if there's anything about my videos you don't like because I enjoy doing this and I'm gonna keep doing it. If there's something offensive, please let me know. If my lips smack, please let me know. Other than that, please just be nice about it or don't watch. Anyway, there was a pretty long tangent and I'm gonna get back on track and show you these two more finished objects that were made from the same yarn as the bag that I just showed you because I ended up buying extra yarn. So I made another bag very much like the large one. And it's just a little bit smaller, but I knew it wasn't big enough for what my friend wanted. So um, although I had started this one, I set it aside and I made the larger one for her. And then I came back and finished this one. And um, you can see the lovely color changes in this one, but they're different. This is the same yarn, but it starts at a different place. The skein begins at a different place and it ends at a different place in the color changes. And I like all of that. And this last one, finished object made from the same yarn, I added the nutmeg. And just to remind you, the yarn I'm using here is Sugar Wheel Cotton, Nutmeg Nibbles, and Nutmeg with a G hook. And then I made one more using the Nutmeg and the Nutmeg Nibbles. And I actually also started this one thinking that my friend might like it, but um, I realized that the nutmeg itself was probably too brown for what she had requested because it was the nutmeg nibbles that she had seen and that she requested. So again, I started this one, I set it aside, I made the larger bag for her, the first one I showed you, and then I came back and finished this one. And I used the nutmeg nibbles on the bottom and the strap. And then I also, I think I 
did nutmeg nibbles every four, or nutmeg every four rows in with the nutmeg nibbles and again in uh, interlocking crochet and single crochet. And I am almost finished with my market bags. I think I have two left in progress. And then um, I'm probably going to move on to something else with crochet. I am having a really good time getting reacquainted with crochet and learning things that I didn't know before, even though I thought I was an experienced crocheter. Um, thank you, Fiber Community, for that. Thank you, Fiber Community, for so many things. So, that's the end of my works in progress and my finished objects for today. And like I said, I'm here to make connections with you. I will have more content. I... Um, I'll talk about tangents in another podcast instead of going off on another one right here. What I would like to say is that I am going to be, I am going to try to be more active on a number of social media platforms um, just because I enjoy the arts and fiber and crafts community so much that I would really like to make more connections and um, connections like I've made with those of you who are probably watching today that I watch most of your podcasts, you watch most of mine. We're not here to um, necessarily be monetized. Of course, there's uh, I support that completely. It's just not where I am right now. Um, but I'm so uh, like, it, when I turn on somebody's channel and I really like their podcasts a lot. And I notice they have an ad and they're monetized. I watch the ad and I'm excited for them. What a strange thing to be excited to watch an ad that has nothing to do with me. Because I know that it's helping one of you. And um, anyway, like I said, that there's a tangent. Because what I was trying to say is I feel connected to you and I want you to feel connected to me. And so that's why I'm going to try to be more active on my Dittmer Knittery Instagram and my Dittmer Knittery Facebook. I also have a blog that has been mostly inactive for about two years. I did make a post the other day and I hope to make posts more frequently to that blog. Excuse me. My blog is on WordPress, and the name of my blog is fiberofbeing.wordpress.com, and there will be a link, there may already be a link, in my description box. So those are ways for you to get to know me, and of course, I want to get to know you. Please comment, and start a dialogue if you like. I, I would enjoy that. I, I read all the comments. I try to reply to every single one. I don't get that many comments. So if you comment to me and I don't reply, it, it means I really, it, it wasn't, I wasn't notified that I had a comment. So comment again and I will reply. I would love to open a dialogue with any of you about fiber arts, um, and other subjects that we talk about, like things we read, things we watch, things we do. Um, and also email me. My email is in my description box. My email is dittmerknittery at gmail.com. So I'm really easy to find. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this fiber arts community. And I'll see you again soon.